Hi everyone, it's MJ and in this video I thought let's do an update on the actuarial exams because I have made a previous video about it um, but that's when the exams were called something different and also we have had quite a not a big like as in content has changed but quite a bit of a restructuring on where that content is tested so there's been quite a bit of changes with regards to the examinations now how actuarial science works is there is an international actuarial association and this is a global organization that kind of sets the actuarial education standards so they're like this is what we need to know then each actuarial society or institute or um, whatever you want to call it in each of the various countries they will then take that syllabus and say okay let's now design our own one for our own country maybe flavor it towards our own regulations and our own economic climate because actuaries we're very much focused on you know local stuff and you need to account for local regulations and local tax practices and all those kind of things so that's said and done, I'm going to go through the South African exams. Now the South African exams are quite similar to, to the English and I know the, the Indian exams also quite similar to the English as well as the Australians. The Americans are a little bit different, um, so just bear that in mind depending on where you're watching this from, um, you might just need to factor that in. But what is nice is this is on the Actuarial Society of South Africa's website and you can actually see all the different stages as well as the various exams. So right at the at the beginning we've got um, these A1 uh, subjects and basically why we have A and F is A stands for an associate member so these all the A exams is what you need to do if you want to become an associate actuary and then the F exams are if you want to become a fellow actuary and a fellow actuary is just an actuary who has specialized in an area and that's the difference between them and an associate. So an associate and fellow all of us will do these these A exams and I guess your foundational technical exams are actuarial statistics business economics and business finance and actuarial statistics i do have a whole course on udemy 13 hours um, i think i've called it mathematical statistics that you can go check out if you want to start your actuarial journey um, although like i've said i'm going to be saying in an upcoming video is that if you want to start the actuarial exams it's very very important that you have a solid maths background and i've also got a udemy course that just goes over the foundational mathematical uh, topics so again all links will be in the description um, so yeah, you basically want to be good at maths and then you can start the actuarial exam. So we've got actuarial statistics, business economics, and then business finance. Then we move on to the intermediate technical subjects. And this is where things start getting a little bit more difficult. Um, we've got financial mathematics. Uh, interestingly, just to note, in England, they combine financial mathematics and con contingencies into one exam. Um, which is weird because in the old system, these two were kept separate. So the South Africans decided to keep them separate. But yeah, we've got financial mathematics. Uh, then we've got risk modeling and survival analysis. And there's also an R component to this exam. This is a very difficult one. Contingencies is like calculating when people are going to die, mortality tables, kind of very, I guess you could call it the most actuarial of all the subjects. And then you have financial engineering and loss reserving. And this one is also very, very tricky when it comes to the mathematics. Stochastic calculus here is, is a nightmare. Um, I've also got courses on Udemy for financial mathematics, financial engineering, risk modeling as well, a little bit. And then my YouTube channel has got contingencies, so you can go check those out. Um, although they're probably horribly outdated. I mean, I was making them back in, what, 2014? That's like seven years ago gosh okay core principles um, actuarial risk management this is the notorious ca1 exam this one is an absolute beast this is what has probably the highest failure rate this causes nightmares in actuarial students around the world very very difficult because essentially you're taking all of these subjects in the like that you would have to you know choose one to specialize in so risk management, finance investment, retirement and related benefits, general insurance, life insurance, healthcare principles, all of these things 
are examinable in this exam. When I did it, it was over three days. You wrote, you got a day off, and then you wrote again. Um, it was absolutely insane. Now, I do have a course on Udemy called the Actuarial Collection, which shows my, my old study videos. So I wouldn't call it necessarily a course that you could, you know, it's not like a formal course. You'll see the videos are very weird, very different, but they were my video study notes that I used to help myself just remember the vast amounts of things, basically almost everything in the financial industry, uh, regulations, benefits, insurance, it's it's an absolute monster of an exam. Um, but like I said, we've got a Udemy course called the Actuarial Science Collection. It's got that in a couple of other videos that, yeah, I think there's, I think there's 46 videos, 46 videos for the, the subject, absolutely insane. Um, then we've got the fellowship principles. So what happens here is you choose two out of the six. So you now financial enterprise risk management is the, the latest one to be added. And if you're coming from England, um, what was happening in the past is general insurance is split into two. So you either be a pricing actuary or a reserving actuary. In South Africa, we kind of combine the two. So this is a monster exam. And then finance and investments, again, we've kind of combined the two. So I think in England, you had it as one is just finance and one is just on investments. And that is just because there's so much content to know that even though you're specializing in it, sometimes it makes sense to split these subjects into even more specialist areas. But yeah, these exams are really, really difficult. You choose two if you want to become a fellow. This is what you're specializing in. Um, some universities, they have this, but a lot of the time you're writing this after you've got your degree. Uh, so this is more of a postgraduate uh, course. And then once you've done two, you will pick one out of the two in which you will do your fellowship. So you can't do your fellowship in health if you haven't done the specialist subject in health. And what we can see is South Africa has been the first to introduce the banking um, actuary. And this is kind of like the fellowship version of enterprise risk management. So enterprise risk management over here, which is one of the courses that I teach, we spend a lot of time on credit risk and building credit models and all of these kind of things. And that's very, very useful for banks. So this kind of just takes it one step further to look at the institution and how a banking organization works and says, okay, cool, how can an actuary assist in this area? So very, very cool. Um, the ones I did, so yeah, I, I wrote finance investments um, and enterprise risk management, and then I did my fellowship in finance investment applications. And I always thought I knew finance so well. I mean, well, I think everybody thinks they know finance so well because we've been playing with money our whole lives. Um, and then I only passed this exam on my third attempt because, yeah, there's, there's definitely a lot, I think, to each of these topics. And especially sometimes what happens is you know, you pass this actuarial risk management exam. So you think you then know all of these subjects really well because you've written this monster exam on them. But the fellowship shows you that there is still a lot of depth to still go in. So countless hours of reading and studying and exam practice, these fellowship exams, oh, they do, they do take quite a bit of time to, to pass. So like I said, for me, failed it twice, got on the third attempt. So in total, it was three, three years. So it's almost like the same amount of time it took me to pass like all the intermediate and uh, all the technical subjects, same amount of time that you need to get into the fellowship. Then what will happen is there's a few other things as well. So if you do the F106 Enterprise Risk Management exam, and you then do this course called the C100 Enterprise Risk Management course, you then enter a global profession. So you then become a chartered uh, enterprise risk actuary. And this is something that it's a global profession. Where with these other ones here, you become a FASA, which is a fellow of the Actuarial Society of South Africa. So it's a local profession. And then if you write F106, you then enter the global profession. There is then a whole bunch of, and I see, They've got the certificate of banking practices. I think that is something that attaches to the fellowship one for banking. I didn't do the banking fellowship, so I'm not entirely sure what that is, but I think it would be similar to this chartered enterprise risk actuary. Then 
Your exams are not done yet. There are still all these things known as normative skills. This is where you see the most difference between all the various actuarial societies. So I don't want to spend too much time here. The big one to note is the communication exam. So this is an exam that you have to write. There's also an exam that you have to write on model documentation. Um, then there's sometimes some pop quizzes, like what I mean like that's like a 20 mark multiple choice. Um, and that could be on the law in your current area or um, on a whole variety of different things. You'll then also go to a few um, conferences where you will learn about, uh, there's the foundational actuarial professional practice, which is if you want to become an associate, and then if you want to become a fellow, there's the fellowship actuarial professional practice where you're talking more about ethics and higher order things and philosophy and, and those lovely things. So, but like I said, this, this tends to change quite a bit, um, and these things are very much specific to the region, but essentially, you do have these core subjects that everybody does, and then you have your specialist subjects where you choose which ones you want to do. And yeah, that is the actuarial exam structure in 2021, but make sure to go to your own local society to see how they have structured it. It should be fairly similar. Um, they, of course, they'll just give it different codes and different names and maybe a slight change here and there. But that essentially is the actual exams in 2021.